He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt at Calvary, He saved my soul, He set me free. I'm glad that Jesus washed all my sins away. And now I see a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. One day he's coming back for me to live with him eternally. Won't it be glory to see him on that day? And now I see a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Like a woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and quiz this dusting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and let me hold. There are millions in this world. Who are crafting the pleasures earthly things are for, but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quit this dusting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. So my children, if the things this world gave you, Leave hungers that won't pass away 
my blessed Lord will come and save you. If you kneel to Him and humbly pray, fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me Standing on the promises of God, standing, 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 standing,
my brother welcome in my sister to another time in god's presence i welcome you to the bible study today the 26th day of the month of march year 2024 hallelujah why don't you give god praise for breaking us out and bringing us back safe it's not by power it's not by our might why don't you glorify let us appreciate him the Lord that kept us. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. From yesterday to today, he, he kept us, took us and brought us in. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Glorify him. Hallelujah. Thanks be to our God for his mercies and God forever. Our God, we say you are good. Jehovah, you are great. Jehovah, you are mighty. Jehovah, you are excellent. There is no one like you. Begin to appreciate this king. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. Immortal, invisible, the holy wise king. Who can be compared unto you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our God will bless you. Mighty Savior will bless you. Also, God will bless you. Autumn God will bless you. The lady of the valley, there is none like you. Take your place today in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to worship God. Hallelujah. He deserves our praise. Psalm number 136. Psalm number 136, verses 1 to 5. Open your Bible with me. Let's read the Psalms together. Psalm 136, verses 1 to 5. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, his mercies, endure it forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercies, endure it forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy, endure it forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercy, endure it forever. To him that by wisdom made the heaven and the earth for his mercies endure forever. Hallelujah. Why don't you begin to glorify him for his mercy? Let's offer thanksgiving to him. Father, we glorify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for mercies. Thank you for favor. Thank you for protection. Thank you for shielding. Hallelujah. From every satanic attack. Thank you for shielding us. Lord, we glorify you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your steadfast love that never failed in our life. Lamentation 3 verse 23 says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our God. Thank you for the peace that we enjoy in you that surpasses the, the peace, the surpasses the human understanding. The peace we enjoy in you. Thank you for peace when we go out. Thank you for peace when we come in. Thank you for peace in the morning, afternoon, and night. There is no nothing we can say that God, we are grateful. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. We know we have come to you with a heart of gratitude. Thanking you for everything. Hallelujah. For what you have done, we are singing hallelujah. For what you are doing, we are singing hallelujah. For what you will do, we sing hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for taking away our fears. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us joy, giving us happiness. Somebody glorify Jesus. We offer to you the sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise. Accept it today. Accept it all the time. That will bring it to you in the name of Jesus. Indeed, you are a faithful God. God, you are faithful. Thank you for mercies. Thank you for faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept our times. The Bible says the lines are falling onto us in pleasant places. Yes, we have a good heritage. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your unfailing grace that we enjoy. 
Thank you, O oh God, for, for showing us mercies and favor. Thank you, O oh God, for your favor we enjoy every day. Thank you for restoration. Hallelujah. Thank you for feeding. Thank you for clothing. Thank you for shelter. Thank you for your good plans for us. Thank you for all the thoughts of the wicked does not come to pass in our life. Thank you for making ways for us. We are there seems to be no way. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for fulfilling your words and your promises concerning us. Hallelujah. Thank you for calling us your children, for not forsaking us. Thank you for renewing your strength. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you for another time. Thank you for yesterday's message. Thank you for yesterday's service. Thank you for the vigil. We are thanking you for today. We are thanking you ahead of tomorrow, which is our Wednesday. We are thanking you ahead of the Shiloh for Thursday. We are thanking you ahead for the vigil of Friday for the monthly vigil. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you, oh God, that you are adding to us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for perfect health over every member of the ministry. We say, Lord, be thou glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for making ways for us where there seems to be no way. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you for forgiving our sins. And we ask, O oh God, that you forgive our sins again in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh God, where we come unto you, we know there is no like you. Oh Lord, forgive our sins again in the name of Jesus. As we come tonight, let it be about you. From beginning to the end, oh Lord, have your way. Touch us and you. Do what you alone will do in our prayer tonight and our Bible study. Open our heart of understanding to understand you and to hear you. Oh Lord, teach us, oh God. We are come before you. You are the teacher, oh God. Teach us, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And the church of God says, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing our hymn to the Lord. And our hymn to the Lord tonight is all to Jesus. High surrender. If I were you, you surrender everything to him. Hallelujah. We surrender everything to him. All to Jesus. High surrender. Let's sing it with joy and with happiness. Hallelujah. All to Jesus I surrender All to Thee I freely give I will ever love and trust You In Your presence daily live I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee. Glory, glory to your 
Blessed Savior, we surrender all. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Amen. I welcome you back, my brother, my sister, to the Bible study today. First and foremost, I want again to apologize for the Bible study yesterday that we could not read together on the wall. So today, I will quickly just read what we did yesterday. I know you could not see it. I was teaching without you reading with me. But today... We quickly read it and make sure we don't, we don't spend more time on it. Then we go on the Bible study for today. If you are just joining us or you are not used to our channel, we use the Open Heavens devotional of Pastor E. E. Adeboye to teach ourselves. But we expand on what he's saying and God has been, has been moving in our life. As we use that, we, we, we tend to learn a lot from it. Don't forget it's like a mentor, a father in faith to hold the whole, most people in the world. So we use the open heavens written by Pastor E.A. E. Adeboye. Hallelujah. And it's been a blessing to us. So what we do today is first of all, paraphrase what we did yesterday. I just read through, then I go to today's message. Hallelujah. We had a computer problem yesterday. But thank God it's all working well now. God is God has put his hand on it. Amen. I want us to bow our head and let us pray. I say, Lord, please speak to me today. Speak to me today. Today, I want to have something, many things I gain from you. Begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, please speak to us, O God. As we come to land under you, open our hearts to receive. Lord, we want to hear your voice directly. Penetrate our hearts. Let your voice be audible to us. Not only hearing your voice, we want to be in tune to you all the time. No, we want our behavior to reflect your child. We want us to act in a way you'll be proud of us. As the word comes into us, let your word renew us. Every sin, let your word take, let your word take it away. Let joy fill our hearts. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have prayed. And the church says, Amen. So we're going to quickly read our open heavens. Hallelujah. I'm believing tonight is your night. The Lord will talk to yourself and myself. And our life will never remain the same again. Our spiritual eyes will open. Our spiritual ears will open. Our spiritual thinking will be sharpened by the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let's share our screen as we always do for our Bible study. Amen. So yesterday, we were only studying. We could, not read, we could not see what we were studying, like I said earlier. So today, we're going to be a change. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we studied on the comfort in service. I spoke so much about it yesterday, so I will not spend much time. I don't also, just want us to read. Maybe yesterday, you were not seeing where I was reading from because I used another uh, my phone to teach, teach us yesterday. Comfort in service. That was a message for March 21st. 2024. Let me quickly read it. Then we go to today's one where I will spend more time. March 21st, 2024. Comfort in service. The memory verse is Jeremiah is from Psalm 26, verse number 8. Psalm 26, verse 8. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house 
and the place where thy honor dwelleth. That was David speaking in that Psalm 26. He says he loved living in the house of God and the place where the honor dwells. And the man of God asked us to read Jeremiah 29, verses 12 to 13. He says, Then shall they call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me, and you find me, when you search me with all your heart. So until we search God with all our heart, beloved, don't complain that God did not answer. Hallelujah. At times we pray, when the prayer is not from the depth of our heart, when our prayer does not reflect who God wants us to be, God is not compared to answer. He said, you shall seek me and you shall find me and when you search me with all your heart. Amen. And the message for which you did yesterday was, by the way, was explaining it. Hallelujah. Comfort in service. Nowadays, many churches are set up to make a congregants very comfortable. That they say, this is fine. However, we must not get carried away such that we prioritize our comfortability or comfort over why we really come to services, which is to have an encounter with God. We must not be looking for comfort. They must come and pick me at home. They must go and drop me at home. They must have this. They must provide food. No, no, no. It's not about comfort. What matters so much is our encounter with God. Whether there is comfort or discomfort, when we know that God is in a meeting, forget your social status and rush there. Don't go for Christian programs to look for comfort. There are no big men in the house of God. According to James 2, verse 1 to 9, if you go to the church to flaunt your social service status, there is something deeply missing in your life. If you go to the church to flaunt your social status, or myself flaunting my clothes, my wears, my social status, I am this, I am that, then I am not really born again. Then you are not really born again. That the devil said the first time I went to a Christian program outside Nigeria was in Kenya around 1975. Our group could not afford an hotel or even travel tickets. We had to pray for God to provide the tickets, and he did. Fortunately, there was a boarding school with dormitories that were made available for free to anybody coming for the program. That the devil said, I was a, a, a university lecturer and there were so many of us in those dormitories, but I did not care. We were in there to show off. We only went to seek the Lord. Thank God I went through that because I can never forget the experience. That was the first time I saw God's throne room. Hallelujah. Can you see? At times, God will make some things uncomfortable so that you will, at times you may not want to go. It's a test. That they say, that was the first time I saw God's throne room. How his throne room is if he had not gone because he had no ticket for, no, no money for hotels or lodging apartments. He had no money even for ticket. If he had not gone, he would not have, he would have gotten the opportunity of seeing such a throne room of God. He said, I will gladly sleep on the floor to see God's throne room again. Hallelujah. One thing I know about God is that we must search for him if you truly know him. One thing I know about God is that you must search for him if you want to truly know him. That is why the Bible says, if they search with, for him with all our hearts, he will make him, himself available for us. We cannot just search for God with the, with the, with the with words of our mouth, but with all our hearts. This is what Isaiah 55 verse 6 says, you should seek him while he may be found. Seek him while he may be found. You have to seek God diligently if you really want to get to know God. When you are seeking his face concerning something, how comfortable you feel should not be an interest. If you want God to do something, you must not, how comfortable should not be an interest. That the other way say, I remember one time when I had been praying concerning a matter for about two years, I was invited to preach at a meeting and that was where God answered me. If I'd missed that meeting, I might never have heard from God concerning that matter. Can you see God will test us? He said, I've been praying for two years for something and it was in the meeting that he invited him that god answered him he could have said i'm not going to the meeting i'm waiting on god but if he had not gone to that meeting that answer may still be pending i was invited to preach at the meeting that was where god answered me if i had missed that meeting i might never have heard from god concerning the matter god shows up 
when two or three are gathered in his aim, in his name, not just gathering, gathering in the name of God with all our hearts. Hallelujah. So if you have been seeking him concerning a matter and he hasn't shown up, go to a fellowship where people are gathered in his name and remind him of his promise according to Matthew 18 verse 20. Go to a fellowship. It is not when we are seeking something and say we don't want to come to the house of God. No, no, no. That's a test. In the house of God, maybe that is where the answer will be. If you are looking for something, God has not answered. Go to a fellowship where people of God are gathered. Remind him of his promise. After the fellowship, whatever discomfort you may have experienced in seeking him would be gone. But your encounter with him will remain forever. Sometimes you may have to choose between getting your miracle and comfort. Do we understand? Sometimes we may have to choose between our comfort and getting our miracle. Daddy said, I hope you choose wisely. And the key point which we said yesterday was, don't miss your miracle because you are looking for comfort. Don't miss your miracle because you are looking for comfort. Oh, I cannot worship in that church. They are too low to my status. Ha! One may just miss his miracle like that. Don't miss your miracle if you are looking for comfort. God may be where you don't think he is. Hallelujah. God is not a respecter of any man. Hallelujah. Wherever they seek him in spirit and truth, that is where he is. God is not a respecter of age or a respecter of class or creed. As much as a seeking him in spirit and truth is always there. Don't miss your miracle because you are looking for comfort. Hallelujah. You know, I, I don't want, I, I always want to, I got something I got about the other religion, something I love a little bit about them. When they are praying, you will see the rich man, the poor man in the same place, using the same mat. You know, I, I remember when I was working in Nigeria, our bosses will come from office. And they would they be at what they come once it's Friday, they are looking for any mosque just to go and pray. Can you see? They don't mind the class. You will see them praying in the same place with the beggars, people that are begging. You see them on Friday doing that. I'm not saying that they made that is their own way, but look at that. There is no respect. And you see the gates, man. You see the security, all of them worshiping the same place. So don't look for your comfort. And miss your miracle. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Don't miss your miracle because you are looking for comfort. Ah, that church is too small to me. Oh, that garden is too small to me. Oh, it's only little people, it's only low people that are in that garden. Don't look for that. Hallelujah. God may be where you don't expect him to be. Everything will come at the test. I pray we will not feel God in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will not feel God in the name of Jesus. Amen. That was where we ended yesterday. So we're going to go to the new topic today, which means seek God first. Seek God first. Seek God first. Somebody say, seek God first. Hallelujah. Seek God first. Amen. And the memory verse is Psalm 63 verse 1. Psalm 63 verse 1. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry, thirsty land where no water is. That was David speaking there. Say, ah, oh God, you are my God. I will seek you early. My soul thirst for thee. My flesh long for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Hallelujah. David sorted God all through his life. Hallelujah. I pray that myself and yourself, we will seek God. Somebody say, we will seek God. Somebody say, we will seek God in the name of Jesus. Oops, sorry, apologies. I did not put that on the line, but do me a favor. Do me a favor by opening your Bible, Psalm number 63, verses 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Open your Bible with me, Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. Let me see if I can quickly put it there so we can be on the same page. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Apologies, 63, verses 1 to 8. Hmm. But if you can open your Bible with me, that would be great. So we can read it together. But if you want me to put it on the wall, I'll gladly put it. Psalm 63, verses 1 to verse 8. Okay, just one minute. I'm about putting it on now for us to read together. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And while you are still doing that, do me a favor, 
Why don't you start praying and just appreciating Jesus? Tell God how good he is to us. Begin to appreciate him while we put that on. Psalm 63 verses 1 to 8. Begin to appreciate the King of glory. The I am that I am. Father, there is none like you. Be thou lifted in the name of Jesus. Thank God for he will speak to you. Hallelujah. Tell God, Lord, I want to hear you. 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 Help me today to know you more in the name of Jesus. Can you see that? Help me, Lord, to know you more. 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 In the name of Jesus, help me to know you. Help me to know you. Help me to know you. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Psalm 63, verses 1 to verse 8. This is a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. When he was in the desert of Judah. That is a psalm of David. Okay, let's quickly open it as we read it together. Amen. Glory be to God. Okay. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. Hmm. It says thus, O God, you, God, are my God. You, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life. Hallelujah. Somebody say your love is better than life. Because your love is better than lives. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. All my bread, I remember you. I think of you through the washes of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Amen. The message, hallelujah, that, that, they will, that is what we read about today, that the day boy said something to us. He said, the story I shared yesterday reminds me what was the story he shared, that, that they went to a place in Kenya. They had no money. They had no money for ticket. They also had no money for hotel. And it was in that place it was a boarding school that they opened for them. That's why there was a lecturer in university. He, he went there with the group that they went together. Might be they are the two, they are the students of the school that they were, he was teaching. He went there with them, but as he went there, it was that place he saw God's throne room. Hallelujah. So he said, the story I shared yesterday reminds me of three Ugandan boys I met at the Christian program in that Kenya. Three Ugandan boys he met there. These boys are probably hungrier for God than any of us at that program. Can you see? Oh my God. These boys, we are probably hungrier for God than any of the boys, any of us in that program. That was 1976. During break times, while everyone went, was buying sandwiches, those three boys would sit together singing praises to God. Why every during break times, people are buying sandwich to eat. These three boys will sing together, singing praises to God. Ha ha! Why they never ate when every one of us ate, and they responded that food was not their concern. Can you see? I asked why they never ate when every one of us ate, and they responded that food was not their concern. Firstly, they had no money to buy food. They came for that meeting. They had no money to buy food. But they were hungry for God than the food. Secondly, they said they were praying to return safely and not get arrested or even executed by the then Ugandan military ruler upon their return. And you know, you know 1976, who was the military ruler of Uganda? That was the idea me. Very ruthless man. Very ruthless man. You remember him, Fid Masha, I mean, he doesn't know any, doesn't want to hear anything about Christianity. So these children, they said they risked their life to come for the cocaine. So they are praying that they will not be killed when they get back. So they forgot about food. And so they had no money for food. 
They said they were praying to return safely and not get arrested or even executed by the then Uganda military ruler upon their return. For three days, they had needed nothing. Three days and were just glad to be there. No matter when that meeting will end, they are new, they have written nothing. They were hungry for God. They did not care about their life. If we die, we die. If we perish, we perish. For the rest of our stay, whatever little I had, I had to share with them. And I told them to write to me when they go back home safely. And they did to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our hunger for God should be such that we won't remember to eat when it's time to seek him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our hunger for God must be to the level that food or anything is not our is not our is not our interest. Hallelujah. You remember the three Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we don't care if we die. All we know is that we will not bow down to your gods. To your God, we don't care if we die, we must get to the level that our hunger for God should be such that we won't even remember to eat when it's time to seek Him. We should be so hungry for God that we are willing to risk our life just to know Him more. Now, the devil he said, I get amazed anytime we call for a fast, and some people grumble, they are not hungry for God enough to fast. For just a few days in the year to draw closer to him. I know we are all guilty of that. That is that the boy said in the 1970s, I used to gather some LCCD youths in a place called Youth Camp. Hallelujah. Accommodation and feeding were usually included in our payment for the venue. But people here really care to eat after the sections. I usually had to beg them to eat so we would not waste the food. They didn't care much for food. They only wanted the word of God. We need to get to that level whereby food is not our, is not our priority. Not only food, clothes is not our priority. They didn't care much for food. They only wanted the word of God. Jeremiah 15 verse 16 says, The words you have found, thy words have found, and I did eat there. And your word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We need to get to that level. Whereby pleasing God must be, must be our goal. Thy words were found and I did eat there. And your words were unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. What exactly are the things we are hungry for? What are the things we are hungry for? Is it food? Fame? Money? Put them all aside. Let your hunger be every day for God. Let our hunger and task every day be for God. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Beloved, get your priorities right. David, in our Bible reading today, said that his soul will follow hard after God. His soul will follow hard after God. Can you say the same for yourself? So my soul will follow after you. My heart tasks for you. My task heart under for you. David, every time of his life, all he wanted was just to please God. Can we say that for ourselves? So we want to pray. Say, oh Lord, let, our, let there be an insatiable hunger for you in my heart. What does insatiable mean? Let the hunger for you in me be insatiable, something that cannot be, that cannot be fully satisfied. So every time we are hungry for him, let that be an insatiable hunger for you in my heart. Until we get to you, until we see you, until we hear you, may we never be satisfied. Let their hunger be something that nothing can satisfy except you. And somebody pray, 
Oh, Father, let there be an insatiable hunger for you in my heart, in my life, in our lives, in our heart, in our life. Let there be an insatiable hunger for you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We're going to do one more, then we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Canceling courses. Canceling courses. That is for Saturday. Canceling courses. The Bible says, no course shall stand. Hallelujah. May God cancel every course in our life. You remember Jacob caused Reuben. It took Moses to cancel the courses on Reuben. Our prayers will connect to the, to the award of prayer tonight. Every course is canceled. Every course is canceled in our life. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, courses. Every course is canceled in our life. In the name of Jesus. Every course is canceled. Every course is canceled. Every course is canceled in our life. In the name of Jesus. Every course is canceled. In the name of Jesus. Every course is canceled in our life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Break. Every course is broken. Every course is broken. Every course is broken. Whatever be the cause, we nullify it by the blood of Jesus. We nullify it by the blood of Jesus. We nullify it by the God, by the blood of Jesus. Every cause whatsoever, Lord, nullify it. Oh, Lord, cancel it. Oh, 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 Lord, nullify it. Oh, Lord, cancel it. Remember, the Bible says, Isaiah 54, verse 17, no weapon that is formed of fashion against us shall prosper. Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed of fashion against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, we shall refuse in court in judgment. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed of fashion shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, hallelujah, shall be refuted. In the name of Jesus, as a child of God, no cause is allowed to stand. No cause is allowed to stand. No cause is allowed to stand. I pray every cause is broken. In the name of Jesus. After this, we're going to pray on castling causes. That will be where we stop today. Hallelujah. No cause we stand. Somebody say, I repel every causes. I repel every causes. Parental cause. Bosses, I mean, causes of leaders. We cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Memory verse. Galatians 3 verse number 13. Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that angered on a tree. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that angered on a tree. Galatians, Galatians 3 verse 13. Hallelujah. Galatians 3 verse 13. He has redeemed us. Whatever be the cause, whatever be the negative pronounce, pronouncement, we nullify it by the blood of Jesus because we have been redeemed. Because we have been redeemed. Whatever cause, negative pronouncement from anywhere, Lord, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. By your blood, cancel it. By your blood, cancel it. By your blood, cancel it. Every cause nullify. Every negative pronouncement nullify. In the name of Jesus, cause is everyone that hangs on the tree. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. The man of God has us to read Genesis 49, verses 5 to 7. Genesis 49, verses 5 to 7. Somebody read with me. And Simon and Levi, our brethren, instrument of cruelty, are in their habitation. Oh, my soul, come not thou into thy secret. Oh, my, come not thou into their secret, into the assembly. My honor, be not thou united. For in the anger they slew a man. In their self-will they dig down a wall. That was Jacob pronouncing curse over Simeon and Levi. If you look at another Bible, particularly let's read it from the New King James Bible. Hallelujah. If you look at from the beginning, he pronounced a curse on them. I told you, Ella, that the curse that, um, that Jacob pronounced on, on Reuben 
Moses nullify it. Moses nullify it. So at times you need the grace of God to nullify. And you need the anointing. Yes, 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 yes. To nullify every cause. That the cannibal shatalima recutting him also to you. Look at that Genesis 49. I want to solve it for first verse, verse, verse number one, particularly to verse seven. Genesis 49, verse 1 to 7. And Jacob called his sons. I'm reading from the New King James Version so we can understand it well. And, and I will read another place for us. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together. I may tell you what shall be for you in the last days. Gather together here, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity, the excellence of power. But he put a cross over Reuben. He said, unstable as, rope, as water shall Reuben be. He said, Reuben shall not excel because he went up to his father's coach. He went up to my father's bed. Then you defiled it. You went up to my coach. That sin can be seen in Genesis 35, verse 22. The sin of Reuben, whereby Reuben slept with one of his father's wife, particularly Big Lad. He said, you went up to my wife, and so I put a cause. And he went and go to her and said, because you went up to my wife, you shall be unstable as water. You shall not excel because you went up to my bed and you defiled it. And look at verse 5. Say, Simon and Levi, I brought this instrument of cruelty are in that dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their cancer. Let not my honor be united to the assembly. For in their anger, they slew a man. And in their self-will, they am strong, am strong and ox. Cause be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Do you know that Simon and Levi, there was no one to, 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 to remove the cause. Thank God, the same Levi were the inhabitants, they were the ones that became the Levites. You know, when God caused them out of mercy, God now used them as Levites. They are the ones that became priests. God removed the cause, but remaining Simeon and Reuben. But when you look at Deuteronomy 33, verse 6, Deuteronomy 33, verse 6, he took Jacob, I mean, he took Moses to have mercy, to have pity on Reuben. Deuteronomy 33, verse 6, he took Moses, another priest, to have, to have pity on Reuben, and he declared, let Reuben live and not die. Deuteronomy 33, verse 6, hallelujah, oh my God. Moses now canceled the cause that Jacob had placed on Reuben. And Moses said, no, 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 by, by a prophet he was caused. By a prophet I shall remove it. Hallelujah. And look at Simeon too. Look at Levi. Levi, God canceled him himself by making the Levites people that will stand before him, people that will be preaching before him. So the, Reba, the, the Levites, one of the descendants of the Levites were the Aaronites. Hallelujah. People that stood before God. Do you understand? So Reuben leave and Jacob, I mean, Moses now canceled the curse on Reuben. Say, let Reuben live and not die. Let his people never be few. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? We have a blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that can nullify any curse. Hallelujah. Canceling the curses in our life. Amen and amen. And we look at Numbers 3 verse 44 to 45. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was where God counseled himself, counseled the cause upon, Le upon Levi. Don't forget, he caused Simeon and Levi. But when he got to Numbers 3, 44, 44 he caused Simeon and Levi after causing Reuben. But when he gets to Numbers 3, verse 44 to 45, God himself had mercy over, over Levi and told Moses, from now on, let let the children, the generation of Levi, let them stand before me. Look at Genesis, Numbers 3, verse 44 to 45. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Numbers 3, 44 to 45. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the Levites. The Levites were the children and generations of Levi, the one that was initially cursed. I hope you are following me tonight. Don't forget that Levi were cursed, that they are instrument of cruelty. But when you get to Numbers, God had pity over Levi, and God told Moses in Numbers in Numbers 3, verse 44 to 45, then the Lord said to Moses, take Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the livestock of the Levites instead of the, all the livestock of the children of Israel. The Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. God, the cause that was placed on Levi, God removed it. 
So it was remaining Simeon and and um, and Reuben. But when we get to Deuteronomy, the, the cause of Reuben was cancelled by Moses. And we are still be what, looking for where the cause of Simeon <laughs> was taken away. I pray to God concerning you and me. Every cause in our life, the Lord will remove in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go to the message. There are many people walking around with causes that they do not have to carry. Particularly parental cause. Many of us, when we offend our parents, they just pronounce some words over us. May God, may God wipe away every curse in our life. There are many people walking around with curses that they do not have to carry. Look at, look at the Gibeonites. Do you remember the Gibeonites during the time of Joshua? That they lied to the children of Israel. And Joshua put a curse over there that we will not kill you, but you shall be water, you shall be water carriers and wood fetchers. They and their generations yet unborn. They became water carriers and wood fishers. So people from Gibeon, the Gibeonites, they find it difficult to make it in life because they had a cost that was on them. You remember Gehazi, the servant of, 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 of Elisha. Elisha put a curse on him that let the let the let the let the leprosy, well, let the leper of Naaman that was cleansed, let it go back to Gehazi. And his generation. Can you imagine? A curse was placed on generation that did not know what happened. You remember when 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 Joshua he, when Joshua broke when when God when God destroyed the walls of Jericho, Joshua placed a curse on it that whosoever build this wall again shall start with the firstborn and shall lay the foundation with the firstborn and that shall hand it up with the lastborn. A curse was hanging. For the, for the generation yet unborn. Do you know the generation yet unborn of Gehazi? They still have the cause of labor. So they come so people that they don't know any something will just happen. They will not know they were the they, they were the sins of, of the of their of their of their forefathers. But Jesus has come, he has cleansed it with his blood. Hallelujah. So that the devil is telling us many people working with causes. You have to we have to be careful. I was listening to a man, particularly was it was his name? Um, 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 there was was this young man, um, um, Suleiman, Apostle Suleiman, and he was saying something. He said, We have to know the God that we serve. You have to know the God that you serve. He said, Because some people, if you look at what is happening, the father died at the age of 50, the son, the uncle died at the age of 50. You have to be careful. As a child of God, you must seek what is happening in my family, what is happening in my generation. It will not happen to me. At times, when you look at something, it's like it's likely like that. You break it. You break it. Some generation, their wives, they, I mean, they don't stay with, they don't stay, they don't, they always, they always struggle. No, so they always struggle. You ask at some generation, they have always struggled at a certain age. Some generations, they are the they are the womb, the mothers that will fend for the children. Some generation, the men die early. You remember the story of that they are boy where a man where, where, a, where a generation a man noticed a particular pattern of death in his household and saw that all his parents were die, all the forefathers died before the age of 50. And he went to that they boy. And you know the year he was supposed to die, God told him. And he decided to come and spend the time in the church. That day that was supposed to die, the evil spirit came, but he could not penetrate to the house of God. So, beloved, you have to know what is happening in my generation. I cancel it in my life in the name of Jesus. So, when we say we know God, we must know the God that we serve so that no evil will manifest in our life. Hallelujah. When you look at children and say, ah, this one is going like this, this line, you have to fight it. Some generation, their firstborn is always is always serving the other with the, the junior ones. You have to nullify it. Say, no, this one, this one will not happen over me. It will not happen over my children. Look at the Gibeonites, like I said. They were born to be servants. That generation were born to be servants. Look at the cost that Noah placed on Canaan. Look at the cost. It was not Canaan that offended Noah. It was it was Ham, Canaan's Canaan's father. It was Ham. It was Ham that saw that Noah was 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 naked. Look at that. It was Ham that saw that Noah was naked. But Noah did not cause Ham. He said Noah caused Canaan. He caused Canaan, the son of 
the son of Ham. You can see that. Look at that. Look at that. Genesis 9 from verse. Let's quickly read it. You can say, so you have to pray that, Lord, no, no cause will stand in my life. And today we're going to be praying that prayer that, oh, Lord, nullify every cause. Look at Genesis 9 from verse number number 18. Look at what happened. It was Ham that offended Noah. But Noah did not cause Ham because Ham was his son. So he knew that if he had caused harm, what will happen to harm, it will be in his witness. So he now placed a curse on the child of harm, which was Canaan. So that by the time Canaan is exhibiting the causes, he will be dead. Or he will not be there to witness it. Or, or it will not be painful for him. That is why Canaan was the land that the children of Israel had to inherit. Canaan was supposed to be a blessed land. That is why the Bible says, I will take you to the land that if flowing will be can honor, be, be, be can honor. Canaan was supposed to be a blessed land that God has blessed. But because of the sin of Am, Canaan's father, the, the children of, I mean, the, the Canaanites, they were dispossessed of their land by the Israelites. Look at, look at Genesis 9 from verse 18. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And these three, these, these three, we are the sons of Noah. And from this, the whole earth was populated. And Noah began, began to be a farmer. And he planted vineyard. I'm reading, I'm reading Genesis 9. I'm now on verse number 20. And Noah began to be a farmer. And he planted vineyard. Is somebody listening to me? He planted vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk. And he became uncovered. He was naked in his tent. And Ham, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father. Instead of him to cover him, he told his two brothers outside, look at your father is naked inside. He, 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 your father that is a drunkard is naked inside. But Shem and Japheth, they took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, went backward so that they would not see their father's nakedness. And they covered the nakedness. They took a cover. They walked backward. They did not go forward. They walked backward so that they did not see their father's nakedness. Hallelujah. Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, went backward, covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. How did he know? That is the spirit knew what he has done for him. Then he said, cause be Canaan. The servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. So Canaan that was originally blessed became a cause because of what the father did. And he said, blessed be the God, be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Can you see? Ha! Huh, can you see? Cause. May Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth. May he dwell in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan also be the servant. Verse 28. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years. So all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died. I pray causes will not stand in our life. Message. There are so many people walking around with causes they do not have to carry. There are families suffering under causes that they no longer have to suffer. Somebody was speaking to me of recent that a woman had a dream in that dream, he saw that people covered their eyes with, with, with the cloth, something of that nature. Maybe that person is watching with me. So people covered their eyes with the cloth and, and they did not see that cloth until she woke up. They began to they began to ask. They said, go and ask what your parents did, not knowing that the parents were kidnappers before the man died, before their father died. Their father was kidnappers. So in the dream, the woman saw that vision whereby they covered their eyes. Somebody pray with me. Many of us, we don't know what our parents did. Some of us, our parents may not be, they may not be kidnappers. They may be thieves that have stolen. They, are, they may be people that has, that has destroyed, that has, that has stopped people from rising up in life. They, our parents may be wicked parents that do not care about other people's children. And you can imagine most of, most of the children in abroad, their parents may be thieves back home. They may, be, they may be people that they have stolen people's wealth. They may be people that have killed people to survive. And they now send their children abroad. I remember something I watched whereby they, 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 they took a, a kidnapper in Nigeria. 
and they ask when he was when he had this kidnapper not only kidnapped he killed many children many people they now ask him have you got children he said yes where are your children he said they are in abroad he sent his own children to abroad and he was doing kidnapping as a business back home sending parts of human being to other people and you said that the children will not go through it that is why i pray with us i pray with myself our children will not will never part they will never cross paths with children of the wicked ones in the name of jesus so we must know the god that we serve our children's path will never cross with the children of the wicked one. Oh, hear me very well if you are a christian you better pray that prayer if a christian as, as fire burning christian we are and we cry and after cross path to the child of the wicked there will be power of God in that house and there will be power of the enemy in that house. And the power of God will be fighting with the power of the enemy. Instead of that child to be blessed, that child may not be blessed, that child may not be caused because there will be two powers that are fighting. Just like they told the mother of Jacob and Esau that two nations are fighting in your womb. Two nations are fighting. The power of the Christian will be fighting. The negative power will be fighting because there is, there is a curse over that, that wife or husband and that's a blessing over this wife or husband. So I pray our children will not cross paths with people like that. Even ourselves will not cross paths with people like that. Do you know that some people, when they have done evil, they come and look for where they come and they, go, they want to give their money because they cannot go back and make and make amends. So that is why you might, you know, some people, you know, back home, some people, they don't give people money. They will tell them this money you have made in an occultic way. Don't give any member of your family. So people that you have their family, they will go to them and say, Auntie, I need money for school. They will never give them because there is a cost of that, that money. That money must not be given to members of their family. But you see the same person giving people outside money, sending children to school. You say this person is wicked, he's not wicked. There is a curse over the money. So I'm not just saying this. So tonight, every curse shall be broken in the name of Jesus. There are families suffering under causes that they do not they do that they no longer have to suffer. Beloved, if you are in such a situation, I bring good news to you today. Causes placed by men can be cancelled. Those that know, remember the Bible says, those that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. So that is why anyone that is under a curse must not only give his life to Christ, you must always be on fire for God because you are giving your life to Christ fine. All things have passed, all things have become new. But don't forget there is a cause that is standing. So that cause will be rearing his head every time, crying his head every time, waiting for the least opportunity for it to strike again. So when you are a person that a cause has been raining in one's family, one has to be on fire. You cannot afford to be cold. You must be hot all the time. You cannot afford to, 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 to have a break because any two attempt, attempt to have a break, devil will strike and that person may not rise again. Causes placed on men can be cancelled. And I pray to you today, all causes placed on you and myself, they are cancelled in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? In Joshua 6 verse 26, Joshua placed a curse on Jericho. And from that moment on, the people of Jericho suffered under that cause. Hallelujah. Joshua 6 verse 26. He placed a curse on Jericho. Cause be anyone that could stands to build this, this, this wall again. That cause stood with them. Let me read it for us from the New King James Version. Joshua 6 verse 26. Is somebody listening to me? Are you enjoying this, this message today? Look at that. Then Joshua charged them at that time, cause be the man before the Lord who rises up and build this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation with his firstborn and the youngest he shall set up his gates. And from that time, the people of Jericho suffered the cause. Many prophets came and went, but the people of Jericho continued to suffer in silence under that cause. At last, when Elijah was taken away, they realized that if they didn't do something about the cause, their land will remain barren. When Elijah was taken away, thank God for Elisha coming back. The moment they saw Elisha coming back, they say, ah, the power, because they saw Elijah coming back alone over the Jordan, they know that he must have come back alone. When they were going, it was Elijah that, 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 that used his cloth on the Jordan and the water parted. When they are coming back, 
Elijah had been taken on the wild wind of fire. When they are coming back, it was Lishala Elisha coming back. They thought he would not be able to come back because the one that can speak the Jordan has passed. But when he came back, they saw him walking by alone. On seeing, on seeing Elisha, they said, truly, the, 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 the anointing of Elijah is upon Elisha. And they saw that, ah, we have lost it one time. Elijah has gone. There's nobody to heal this land. We are in a land that is blessed, but one is, they are not enjoying the blessing of the land because a curse was on the land. A curse was on the land. At last, when Elijah was taken away, they realized that if they didn't do something about the curse, their land will remain barren and death will be rampant amongst them forever. So they called on Elisha. That was the first miracle Elisha did. The moment he came, the Bible said they bowed under his feet. And look at that. Second, Second Kings 2, verse 19 to 22. Let's quickly read it. Second Kings 2, verse 19 to 22. Hallelujah. Then the men of city, they came to Elisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, then the man of the city came to Elisha. Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord says, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl and they put salt and put salt in it. Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. And they brought it to him. Then he went to the source of the water and cast in the salt there. And he said, Thou hear the Lord, I have healed this water, and from it there shall be no more death. Or paradise before them, he that told to that time they were dying just like left, right, and center. They were dying, there was death, there was paradise there. And when Eli Elisha had to go to the source, that was where the water was caused. He went to it where the cost, the cost was on the land because Joshua placed the cost on the land that who serve on this land that wants to do this, this shall happen. So he went to the to the land that produced the water that was that was that was that was bitter. The land up there where the source to where the water was coming out. He said, Give me a clean bowl, put salt in it. Then he went to this water and said, Thus said the Lord, I have healed this water from it. There shall be no more death and barrenness. It was the water that was bringing death because the water was bitter. When the water is bitter, the land could not produce any good. When the land could not, pro when the land could not produce anything good, definitely the, the, the place, no matter how blessed that place is, there shall be nothing good. There can, they have nothing good to show forth. The water was bad. The water, the bitter water was, was, was irrigating the land. The land could not produce. And they were in a good location. Don't forget, the first thing they said is that you can see our location is pleasant. Look at that, verse, verse 19. The men of the city said to Elisha, please notice, the situation of this city is pleasant. Where we are located is pleasant. How can somebody be in the United Kingdom and in America, in Australia, in Germany, and say you are one is suffering? The location is pleasant, but there is a cost that is ringing there. The location is pleasant. As my Lord can see, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. The ground will be barren because the water is bad. It is the water that, that, that wets the ground. So when the water is bad, the ground cannot bring anything. So everything in the ground dies. You remember, just like around the Dead Sea, nothing grows there. You can see the Dead Sea, everything there is plain ground. Everything died. Look at, look at, the, look at the desert. Nothing can grow in a desert. It is a dead land. There was no water there. The Dead Sea, the water in Dead Sea is so acidic because every water flows to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea does not flow anywhere. So the Dead Sea takes every death, every death from every sea. And the hand up there, you will never, you can only see an inflow to the Dead Sea. You will never see an outflow. That is why other rivers are clean because they are flowing. But the Dead Sea is so dirty, it's so polluted, it's so, there's no way. That's why you go in the Dead Sea, you will float. See, the water is bad. So he said, bring me a bowl. They went to the source, cleanse it, pour the salt there. Then says to the Lord, I have filled this water from it. There shall be no more death or barrenness. And the water remained cleaned, healed, healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Hallelujah. They brought it to him. He took it in his hands, went to the source, poured the water, and he, and he cleansed the water. From that day, that cost was cancelled. Any cost on our life or family today shall be cancelled in the name of Jesus. May we never continue to live under the cost. 
any cause on your life or family can be cancelled today if you refuse to continue living on diet. Somebody, you must be tired. I know it cannot continue like this. I'm seeing the pattern of my father in my life. I'm seeing the pattern of my mother in my, my girl's life. It must not continue like this. We must break it. We must break it. You remember, Isaac told Esau, when you are tired, you break the words. You break it over your life. You break the course. You remember when I see eyes, I said, bless me also. I have blessed your brother. It is full No, no, no. Bless me also. He said, okay, I'll give you a blessing. You must be tired. You must be tired. He said, where you are? Oh, my God. Is somebody hearing me? He told him, yes, yes. He said, where you are tired? You break it over. Oh, my God. Let's quickly read that place. Let's quickly read that place. Hallelujah. 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 Amen and amen. Amen and amen. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Mm, mm, mm. I want to read this. So you have to be tired. I say, no, I cannot continue like this. Look at that. Genesis 27. Genesis 27. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Verse, let me take from verse, verse, from verse 32. And his father, Genesis 27, from verse 30. From verse 30. So you have to be tired. I say, no, I cannot continue a life like this. Oh, no, break every course in my life. I don't know great break. I don't know where my children will go and marry. Break every course in that nations in the name of Jesus. Look at Genesis, Genesis, Genesis 27 from verse 30. And it's happened as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob. Jacob has scarcely gone out of the presence of Isaac, his father, that he saw his brother came in from his hunting. He also had made savory food, brought it to the father, said to the father, Let my father arise and eat of my son's game heat of this of his son's game that your soul may bless me and the father isaac said said to him who are you he said i am your son your firstborn esau then esau then, then isaac trembled exceedingly and said who where is the one who hunted game brought it to him i heard all of it before you came i have blessed him and indeed he shall be blessed verse 34 then esau had the words of his father he cried with an exceedingly great and bitter cry exceedingly great and bitter cry and he said to his father bless me also oh my father but he said your brother came with deceit has taken away your blessing then he said is he not rightly named jacob he has supplanted me these two times he took away my birthright and now look he has taken away my blessing and he said have you not reserved a blessing for me then isaac answered and said to his indeed i've made him your master all his bread and i've given him to your servants to have given all his bread and I have given to him as servant with grain and wine. I have sustained him. What shall I do now for you, my son? And Esau said to the father, Have you only one blessing, my father? Bless me, me also, oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the heart and of the dew of heaven from above. By your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass. Where that is where we are going. When you become restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Somebody is hearing me tonight. You must be restless and break every yoke of causes over our life in the name of Jesus. Somebody say every yoke of causes is broken away in my life in the name of Jesus. You must not continue as our fathers, our mothers, our brothers and sisters continue. You must be restless. Restless means it's to say no and say every yoke is broken. If the cause was placed by your biological father, you can go to a spiritual, your spiritual father. Who is your spiritual father? The one that feeds you about the word of God. The one that is feed you. Any cause placed by the biological father, the spiritual father can break it off. You remember I told you that yes, 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 it was Moses that broke the cause that Jacob placed over, over, over Reuben. He said, let Reuben live and not die. That is Deuteronomy 33 verse 6. Where your cause is placed by any biological father, a spiritual father can break it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can cancel the cause. This is because why? Only the spiritual controls the physical. Any cause placed by anyone, your one that feeds you the word of God, that you believe in him, that this is my spiritual father. Only he can break it. And only her can break it. This is because the spiritual controls the physical. Also, if that cause was placed by a man or a woman of God, you need to go to a minister of God that has a greater anointing than that fellow. And he or she can cancel the cause. If the cause was placed by a witch or a wizard, 
any anointed man or woman of God can cancel it according to Isaiah 10 verse 27. Isaiah 10 verse 27. So no wishes nor wizard can start. Any anointed man of God has the power to cancel any cause placed by wishes or wizard. I pray that from now on, no cause shall stand in our life. Isaiah 10 verse 27, it says, it shall come to pass in that day that his body will be taken away from our shoulder and his yoke from our neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. So anybody that has the anointing has the power to break any yoke. Hallelujah. Beloved, you must ever note that beyond going to a man or any man or woman to cancel causes on your behalf, you must seek God's anointing very well. You must know where you stand. You hear me very well. No pastor, no spiritual father, no spiritual leader, no and no greater anointing can cancel any cause when one is still living under the bondage of sin. You must know the Bible says, Apostle Paul says, shall we continue in sin and ask grace to abound? You must first of all forsake sin so that so that uh, so that the cause will not have something to feed on. If one is living in sin, the yes, like you are giving food to the cause. The cause has something to feed on. Hallelujah. That, that's why the Bible said the, that, that there shall be no cause without causes. You remember, no cause, there shall be no cause. The Bible said no cause without causes. Are you getting it? I pray. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Yes, there are no cause we stand with that. Every cause must look at that. Proverbs 26, verse 2. A cause given for no reason is what as a bird by a Proverbs 26 verse 2 as a bird by wandering as a swallow by fire by flying so a cause without a cause shall not stand and look at what look at the way King James Bible says it hallelujah any cause that has no cause shall not stand so you must able to understand what is the cause of this cause I break that cause when you refuse to feed that cause and most of the time the cause of the cause is standing in one's life is our sin Look at that. Look at the King James Version of Proverbs 26, verse 2. As the bird by wandering, as a swallow by falling, so the cost costless shall not come to pass. Any cost that is costless will not come to pass. The message Bible says it. You have, you have as little to fear. I, I, I like the message Bible. You have very little to fear from an undeserved cost as from the dart of a rain or the swoop of a swallow. Nothing to fear. Hallelujah. When you know the God that you serve, I pray to God in heaven that every cause in our life is destroyed today in the name of Jesus. On the self cause, we not land on the intended victim. You must know how do we do that? You must break the, the, the anchor of sin so that sin, every if one is still sinning, one is feeding the cause. You are going into sin, one is feeding the cause. You must, I ever know that beyond going to any man or woman of God, to cancel any causes on your behalf, you must seek God's anointing as well. We must pray, we must fast, we must study the Bible, we must fellowship. Don't forsake the garden of brethren. Even the garden, the Bible says, how can one chase a thousand and to put ten thousand to flight? Never forsake the garden of brethren. There are some things you cannot do alone. Look at that. When when the, when when Herod took James, beheaded James. Look at remember, he wanted to kill Peter. The Bible says, and the brethren were praying. They were praying. He could not do it. Hallelujah. When the Bible says that, hey, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. When brethren come together, as we are going to do, as we do every day, no power in hell, in hell can stand against us when we come together. So don't forsake fellowship. Don't forsake prayer meeting. Hallelujah. We don't just come to church because we want to come to church. We want to come to church. We come to church because of synergy. We come to, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the ants when they want to lift anything? The ants, they, do, they know they cannot lift it alone. They go and call thousands of them. And no matter how big that thing is, one day I saw the ants that were lifting a big cube of sugar. There were so many, they were moving it. There were so many, they lifted it. One day I saw the ants, they were lifting a, a cockroach. And I was, I stayed and I was looking at them on the street. I stayed and I was looking at them. They gathered so much. The cockroach is there. They were lifting it away. Hear me very well. Where, why one, by, you see, oh my God. The Bible says, how can, by, you say, by, 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 how can one experience it? Except you are two or three. Hallelujah. By one, one can make me not be able to lift anything. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are, to, oh my God, by two or three people, 
you can do many things. I want to see there are many Bible portions to that. Hallelujah. There are many Bible portions to that. Hallelujah. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, God help me. So you need to look for people that can be of the same thing with us. Hallelujah. Look at that. Matthew 18 verse 20. A lot of Bible passages you can see that. Matthew 18 verse 20. Where two or three gather in my name, there I am. Hallelujah. You can see a lot of Bible passages on that. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. We will understand what it means to come together and pray. We will understand what it means to come together and pray. Hallelujah. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Look at, look at verse 19. Matthew 18. Again I say unto you, if two or two shall... Look at that. I love it that. Matthew 18 verse 19 to 20. He say, again I say unto Jesus speaking, if two or two of you agree on earth, two of you agree on earth on anything they ask, it will be done by my Father too. Not only one. So what else you need the fellowship. Hallelujah. When, when you do this, no cause can rest. You must, we must pray fast, study the Bible, fellowship with God, so that we carry, begin to carry his glory and his power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must do that. Hallelujah. We are two or three are gathered in my name. There I am. Hallelujah. Amos 3 verse 3. Amos 3 verse 3. Do two work together unless they have agreed to meet. Hallelujah. So you have to know the power of of coming together, the power of coming together. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. May the Lord answer us in the day of trouble. May the name of Jacob protect us. May God send help to us from his sanctuary and may he support us for Zion. May you remember all our prayer and regard all our offerings. May God send help to us on the way, everywhere in the name of Jesus. When we come together like this, there is always a movement, a shift in the spirit. When you give this, no cost can get. No, who is that cost? I told you, who is that cost that can stand? When you have, when we have God with us, if God is with you, like it was with the Israelites in Numbers 24, we will be blessed and no cost will be able to stand on you, stand against you. No cost will be able to rest on you. And you get in. Look at Moses. When he went to, he could not fight the battle alone. He told Joshua, when there was a battle of the Amalekites, he told Joshua, pick strong men, go and fight them. Hallelujah. He told Joshua, pick strong men and go and fight them. And Moses went to the mountain. He raised his hand up. Hallelujah. The Bible says once he raised his hand, hallelujah. Oh my God. You can see that. Look at Exodus 17. Exodus 3 17. I will still hope I'm not taking our time. Look at Exodus 3 17. When Joshua had to fight with the Amalekites, hallelujah. Moses, all Moses was to do was to go to the after the mountain. Exodus 17, look at from verse 10. So Joshua did did what Moses had commanded and for the harming of the Amalekites. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and all climbed to the mountain to the top of the nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff on his hands, the Israelites had the advantage. But when the hand dropped, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' hands became so tired, he could no longer hold it up. So Aaron and Hor, they found the stone for him to sit on, and they stood on this side of Moses, holding up the hands of the hands of Moses. So his hands were held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed and destroyed the army of the Amalekites in the battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at that. Moses could not do it alone. Joshua was fighting the battle. Moses was on the hill. Thank God Aaron and horse followed him. So at times you cannot do some fighting alone. We need people like prayer, people of people like with prayer, like you and I, to come together to fight it together. Aaron and Hor, if they are not followed Moses, the Israel would have been destroyed because Moses is human. Very soon his eye was heavy. He could not lift it up again. So they had, and he was tired. They had to, he cannot put it off to go and find something to sit down. They would have killed the whole Israelite. So he run a hot talk within himself. This man is human. He is not an Indian. He is not, he is not extraordinary. He is also human like me and you. You and I. He's not Jesus. So they put a stone, one for him to sit down. When he sat down, you can know there is a rest. And somebody and just standing up and raising his hands up. They provided a place for him to rest. He sat down, the hands were still up, so that Joshua can and the, and the armies of Israel, they can win the battle. Then Aaron and Hor, they stood by his side and they held his hand up. That was that enabled Moses' hands to stay up and they enabled Joshua to win the battle. So, beloved, don't forsake the garden of, of brethren. Always look for where there are good prayers 
of the right minds. When you go to a gathering and you see that your mind does not connect, definitely leave that place. Maybe they are, maybe their hearts are not alright. But you, when you go to a place and you see there is a, this place is fire, is fire brimmed, is fire, is fire, there's fire in this place. Join with them and you can see God do mighty things. Hallelujah. God will be with us in the name of Jesus. Those who remain close to God can never be cursed. Those who remain close to God can never be cursed. And with this, we hand to this message. But we're going to pray. And I told, I told you before, no cause will stand in our life in the name of Jesus. Somebody, I want you to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, nullify every cause. Cancel every cause in my life. Begin to pray. Don't be quiet. Oh, Lord, nullify. Cancel. Cancel every cause in my life. Oh, Lord, cancel it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I cover myself. I cover my wife. I cover my children. I cover my home with the blood of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Lord, cover us. Cover us. Cover us. We're going to pray. Please, God, please give me an extra five minutes today. I want us to pray. Every cause. Nullify it by the anointing in the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, nullify every cause in our life. No cause shall stand. No cause shall stand. I belong to Jesus. My wife belongs to Jesus. My children belong to Jesus. And so every cause is nullified in Jesus' mighty name. I want us to pray. Say, Father, protect me and my family in the name of Jesus. Protect us. Protect us. Protect us. Protect us. Protect us in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, protect us. Oh Lord, protect us. Oh Lord, protect our family. Every member of Trek Ministry, Father, protect us in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody begin to break every power of causes. Somebody begin to break it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break every power of causes over our life. Hexes, vexes, spells, charms, fetches, psychic powers, psychic thoughts, witchcraft, sorcery, magic, voodoo, mind control, jinxes, Portions, bewitchments, death, destruction, sickness, pain, torment, psychic power, psychic warfare, prayer chains, negative chains, incense and candle burning, incantation, chanting, chanting, hoodoo, everything that is sent our way against the word of God, we nullify it in the name of Jesus. So we begin to nullify it. Every cause is nullified. Exes we are nullified. Verses we are nullified. Spells we are nullified. Charms we are nullified. Fetish we are nullified. Chai prayers you are well nullified every negative thoughts you are nullified all witchcraft sorcery magic every voodoo is nullified every mind control Ah, what is nullified? Negative words, heavy jinxes, heavy portion, heavy bewitchment, power of death, destruction, sickness, pain, torment, heavy negative warfare power is nullified in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, oh Lord, deliver us. Oh Lord, deliver us. Oh Lord, deliver us. Deliver my family, deliver my children, deliver Trek ministry, deliver Shiloh ministry in the name of Jesus. Every hour of the enemy will return it back multifold in the name of Jesus. How of the enemy, every attack, every negative words, go back to your sender, go back to your sender, go back to your sender, go back to your sender. Every cause is broken, every cause is broken, every cause is broken, every cause is broken in the name of Jesus. Every cause is broken, family cause is broken, parental cause is broken, every cause of location is broken in the name of Jesus. We ask you by the power of God to begin to reign in us, to begin to reign in us in the name of Jesus. We declare it is well with us. We break every curse. We break every curse. We break every curse. Curses are broken as we go out, as we come in. The Lord will break every curse on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we break every curse over our businesses, over our work, over our finances, over our savings. Every curse that what we have to finish spending before another come, we nullify it. Every financial curse that one can, someone will keep borrowing, we nullify it. No longer will we borrow. The Bible says, we will lend to nations, we will never borrow, we shall be the head, we shall not be the tail. According to Deuteronomy 28, we declare the blessings of God over every member of this ministry. In the name of Jesus, it is well with us who are manifest the wonders of God. In the name of Jesus, we declare it is well with us. In the name of Jesus, according to Deuteronomy 28, from verses 2, all the blessings of God shall overtake us. In the name of Jesus, all the blessings of God shall come upon us, shall overtake us. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the country. The fruit of our body is blessed. The produce of our garden is blessed. The increase of our house is blessed. The increase of our cattle is blessed. And the 
fruit of our flock is blessed. Blessed shall be our basket and our leading bow. Blessed shall we be where we come in. Blessed shall we be where we go. The Lord will cause our enemies who rises against us to be destroyed, to be defeated, to be annihilated before our face. They shall come against us one way. They shall flee several ways. Seven ways they shall flee. The Lord will command the blessings on us in our banks, in our storehouses. Hallelujah. In order that we set our hand in the name of Jesus. Somebody declare. Somebody declare. Somebody declare. I hear the word of God. Let us read the contemporary English in the name of Jesus. Concerning the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Begin to read it. Begin to declare in the name of Jesus. I hear the word of God. I want to read the blessing for us in the in the world, in the message Bible. All the blessings will come down on us, spread out over us. I hear the word of God. Read the blessings for my people in the message Bible. All the blessings will come down on us, spread out beyond us because we have heard the voice of the Lord. God's blessing in the country. Say amen. God's blessing upon our children. Say amen. On the cross of our land, on the young of our livestock, the cast of our heart, the lands of our flock. God's blessing on our basket, on our bread bowl. God's blessings in, the, in our coming in. God's blessing in our going out. God will defeat our enemies who attack us. They will come onto one road. They will run away on several roads. God will hold their blessings on our banks, on our workplaces, on our banks. He will bless us in the land that God is giving us. God will form us as a holy people unto him, just as he promised us, as we keep his commandments. Hallelujah. All the people of the heart shall see us live under the name of the Lord, and they shall hold us in respect to all. God will lavish us with good things, children from our from our womb, offspring from our animals, and cross from our land, the land that God has promised our ancestors, he will give unto us. God will throw open the doors of the sky bowls. Hallelujah. He will throw open the doors of the sky bowls and pour rain upon our land on schedule and bless the work we take uh, we take in hand. We will lend to many nations. We will not have to take out alone in the name of Jesus, God will make us the head and not the tail. We will always be the top, we will never be below in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. We declare this well with us. Go and manifest the wonders of God in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. We have prayed, and the church of God says. Amen and amen and amen. I love you all. I celebrate God in your life. Don't forget tomorrow is Wednesday. Our prayer continues from 12. 12 o'clock, there's no Bible study. So it will be prayer. 12 o'clock. And by 3 p.m., we come together, we pray for our children. 12 o'clock will be general prayer. Tomorrow, Wednesday, yes. 12 p.m. in the afternoon. If you are not at work, join us online. It will be general prayers. 3 p.m., we gather every Wednesday to pray for our children. And by 8 p.m., we come together again, again. Just like we did tonight, we do it every day. God helping us, except when we have other things that are staking it. We try as much as possible to do this every day. Bible study. Hallelujah. Using the Open Heavens devotional. Hallelujah. So we're going to come back again tomorrow night. Don't forget tomorrow is Wednesday. It's the midweek service. We come back again for a blessing like this. But 12, 12 noon, we come in to pray online. 3 p.m. online prayer for our children. 8 p.m. for a Bible study like we did today. And prayer time. Don't forget, God told us yesterday that throughout this week, our prayer will be, I will do a new thing. So, we only prayed on the courses because we just studied on the courses. So, tomorrow, except God leads otherwise, what we want to do this week is, I will do a new, I will do a new thing. And God promised us in the video yesterday that before this April, many of us will testify to the goodness of the Lord. I know I'm one of them. A new thing, a new door, a new remembrance, a new testimony. Don't hide it. No way. We, when God blesses you, let others know so that they can believe that God is still in the business of hide of, of doing miracles. Those are how, when we are praying, everybody prays for us. But when the testimony comes, many one will start to hide it. I don't want the food to know. No, no, no. Celebrate, celebrate God, God's wonders. And people that are going through, we know God is still answering prayers. Amen and amen. I want to say thank you to everyone that joined tonight. The power of God will continually be great in our life. God will use us for his glory. Every message we are hearing, they will, they will make us to be fit for God's use and purpose in the name of Jesus. We declare our mind, our heart, all our being shall serve God in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. God bless you. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. A massive thank you to everyone. And one more time, I want to appreciate my beautiful wife, Mother in Israel, Uluwaye Misifat Tukashi, and celebrate God's grace in your life. Thank you, ma, for always believing in me and in this ministry. God will continually be with us. Mother in Israel, Fatu Tukashi, you are blessed as you go out. You are blessed as you come in. Everyone connected online, you are blessed. Go and manifest the wonders of God. I will see you tomorrow by 12 noon. God bless you.